welcome to the Blindfold Chess Podcast. Anatoly Karpov is a Russian grandmaster and former world champion who dominated the game in the 1970s and 80s. He was born on May 23, 1951 in Slavtovsk, Russia, and began playing chess at the age of four and earned his candidate master title at 11. At the age of 12, he was admitted into Mikhail Bodvinik's chess school. Bodvinik remarked, quote, The boy does not have a clue about chess, and there's no future at all for him in this profession. End quote. Karpov first gained international attention in the late 1960s. He won the World Junior Chess Championship in 1969 and earned the title of International Grandmaster in 1970 at the age of 19. Karpov's first major tournament victory came in 1971 when he won the USSR Chess Championship. Three years later, he won the Candidates Tournament, earning the right to challenge the reigning world champion Bobby Fischer. However, when Fischer refused to play to defend his title, Karpov was declared the world champion by default. Karpov successfully defended his title twice against Viktor Korchnoi in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Karpov then ran into the wall of Garry Kasparov, who became his chief rival in the 1980s. They met in the World Championship in 1984, which was halted after 48 games with five Karpov wins, three Kasparov wins, and 40 draws, again in 1985, where Kasparov won 13 to 11, again in 1986, where Kasparov won 12 and a half to 11 and a half, again in 1987, where they ended up tied at 12 apiece, but Kasparov kept the title, and lastly in 1990, where Kasparov won 12 and a half to 11 and a half. All in all, they played 144 games against each other in the World Championship, with Kasparov winning 21, Karpov winning 19, and with 104 draws. The World Championship of 1993 saw Kasparov and Nigel Short withdraw from the World Championship to form the Professional Chess Association, stripping them of their titles and official ratings. Karpov was then listed as the defending champion and faced Jan Timon, easily winning 12.5 to 8.5. Karpov then beat Gadakamsky in 1996. Karpov beat Anand in tiebreaks in 1998. Then in 1999, the format of the championship was changed to a knockout style bracket to determine the champion. And in protest, Karpov, along with Kasparov and Anand, refused to play. During his career, Karpov won numerous tournaments, including the Linares tournament, which he won a record seven times, the Soviet championship nine times, and was a key member of the Soviet national team, helping win numerous chess Olympiads and European team championships, on top of being in 11 world championship matches where he won six of them. He was known for his positional style of play, which was characterized by his ability to slowly build up an advantage, then methodically grind down his opponents. He was a dominant player during his prime, and his positional style of play remains an inspiration to many young chess players today. He's won numerous awards and accolades, including induction into the World Chess Hall of Fame in 2012. His contribution to chess theory, style of play, and longevity in the game makes him one of the greatest chess players of all time. Today, we are traveling back to round 16 of the USSR Championships of 1971 before he became the world champion. Anatoly Karpov versus Mark Danovich Tretzen. Now, if we're ready, let's begin. One pawn to e4. Pawn to e5. Two knight f3. Knight c6. 3. Bishop b5. Pawn to f5. 4. Knight c3. Knight d4. Five. Bishop a four. Knight f six. Six. Knight captures e five. 
Pawn f captures e4. 7. Kingside castle. Bishop c5. 8. Knight captures e4. With knight captures e4, white is gaining a pawn, but what piece can take it? That would be the black knight on f6. So this might look like a peace sacrifice. So what does white have up his sleeve? Knight captures e4. Nine, queen h5 check. Pawn to g6. Ten, knight captures g6. Knight f6. After black's knight to f6, the white queen on h5 and the knight on g6 are both under attack but black also has a loose piece. What is it and where? That would be the dark square bishop on c5. Eleven, queen e5 check. Bishop e7. 12. Knight captures h8. Pawn to b5. 13. Queen captures d4. Pawn b captures a 4. 14. Rook e1. King f8. 15. Pawn to d3. Rook b8. 16. Queen e5. Knight g8. 17. Queen h5. Queen to h5 is kind of sneaky from white. It threatens to capture the h7 pawn, but it also has a bigger threat. What is that? That would be checkmate on f7 from the knight on h8 assisting. King g7. 18. Knight f7. Queen e8. 19. Bishop h6 check. Knight captures h6. Twenty, queen captures h6 check. King captures f7. Twenty-one, queen captures h7 check. King f8. Twenty-two. Rook e3. What do you think the plan with this rook is going to be? Rook b6. Twenty-three. Rook g3. Black resigns. 
there's no way for Black to stop the checkmate without suffering some major material loss. The idea for White is to play rook to g8 checkmate, so Black can stop that with rook to g6, which will lose the queen after rook captures g6, queen captures g6, and then White's queen captures on g6. Or Black can play queen to f7, which guards the g8 square for now, but White can play queen to h8 check, queen to g8 to cover, and then queen captures g8 checkmate. I also find this amusing because white only played two pawn moves during the game, so six pawns are still at their home spot. It really is hard to grasp how dominant Karpov was during his time. Playing in over 10 world championships, being the world champion for over 10 years, and winning that many prestigious tournaments, it's hard to imagine anyone else being that dominant. So that is all that we have for this week. Tune in next time, where we will continue to work on our blindfold skills and look at another game of the Masters.